so we're going to come back to looking at alleles again and I'm hoping that you're familiar with the idea that alleles can be dominant or recessive. Now the reasons why for that we're not going to get into, we're just going to accept that alleles can be dominant or recessive and move on. And we're going to use an example here of these generic creatures, some of whom have short ears and some of whom have long ears. And if we look at the population of our generic creatures, we'll see that the, the creatures with short ears appear more often. And if we do some study on them, we discover that the short ear allele is dominant and I'm going to call that capital E. We discover that the long ear allele is less, is recessive and the, the, science, um, the science idea behind dominant and recessive is that if an allele is dominant you only need one copy of it for it to appear in your body but if it's recessive you need two. Okay so for our generic long and short eared creatures I hope you can see that if, if this is true for a creature to have long ears, it must have two copies of the little e allele, okay, the long ear allele. That means, in the fancy science words, it is homozygous recessive. Homo meaning same, so same allele recessive, okay. But we can also see that our, we can also see that our short-eared creature, it could have two big E alleles or it could have a big E and a little E allele and that's because we know that you only need one copy for it to appear. So short-eared creatures could be homozygous dominant, same allele, the dominant one, or heterozygous, one dominant, one recessive. All right, so these things here, these things here, the actual alleles that you have in your body or in this case the little cat creatures have is called your genotype okay the type of genes you have the actual alleles carried in your cells so if we took your chromosomes and we took a look at them we would be like oh look there's the code for big e oh look there's the code for little e then we would look at your body and we'd say, oh, well, you've got a phenotype, which is your actual appearance or trait, okay? So in the case of our cats, we would be like, oh, well, look, its genotype is homozygous dominant. It's got short ears. Oh, look, its actual genotype is heterozygous oh it's got short ears oh look its actual genotype is long-eared uh, is homozygous recessive it's going to have long ears okay and these go back the other way if we look at a generic cat creature and we see that it's got long ears we're like oh ho, ho, it must be homozygous recessive on the other hand, if we look at a generic cat creature and we see it's got short ears, we're like, oh, it could be homozygous dominant or it could be heterozygous. And in the next video, we're going to look at how we, man one, how we manipulate that and two, how we can test for the situation that we've got.